Yeah, the stuff from God. <laughs> In all honesty, I probably have already at least a hundred mosquito bites on me and it's... <sighs> Luckily I had some repellent in the car because otherwise none of this would have been manageable. Um, here's some groundwork from an old house I see. Rather interesting. What I want to talk about today is uh, about something that's kind of uh, mixed in or fused in between uh, journaling, between to-do lists, between having a calendar and from the perspective of uh, why you're failing at it. So my year 2022 started off in this very notebook on uh, this very page and from there on I continued to use this kind of uh, as a to-do list more of. Uh, occasional journaling. I tried out several different methods and uh, to see which are the ones that I would stick to, which are the ones in my situation that would work. And from there we're coming on to the topic of today's video because ultimately on some of those methods I truly failed and that's what I want to talk about. And to start off the intention of your notebook should be like clear in your mind what do you want from it and what is the goal that you're trying to achieve. And that's mistake number one right there, not knowing why you're having it. And the intention and goal of the notebook can obviously change as days go by and you gather more experience on how to use it and you find out that what's effective in your way of using it. This brings us to mistake number two you might be doing and that's being too organized with your notebook. So when you're having a large notebook with plenty of space, which in my opinion is not bad at all, actually there are some good sides to it. When starting out you might be googling blogs from these kind of, how would I say, super journalers, which have all these like really tidy pages with blocks for everything. There's a to-do list from every day, thank yourself every day for this, uh, improvement of the day for that and yeah, it, it just gets overwhelming. To the point that considering this is a new thing for you, you might have energy to do it for a few days, but then the process of <laughs> using the notebook for its intended purpose, it just gets way too cumbersome and you skip out on it ultimately. So my tip for that is to cut out the crap and essentially only have what you want to write in it. Mistake number three is not having the right tools for the job. Uh, a mistake I made was when using this notebook with this very pen over here. The notebook was decently sized, no problem with that. Initially I decided on going with the Big Idea Design Titanium Mini Bolt Action Pen. It fits right next to the notebook and it always goes with me and uh, for some of you people out there it actually might work. And more often than not I just found myself not using the pen at all because of its small size it wasn't comfortable to use for its intended purpose. Uh, it's a pen after all, you're, you're supposed to use it for writing. So what I did was to switch out the pen to a full-sized one, which I'm carrying with me now daily. And yeah, it's so much more comfortable now to write. And the notebook I'm using is uh, made by Lokby. It stores handily the pen over here. And uh, when you open it up, it actually protects the notebook quite good. Nice and secure all the time. And on the topic of carrying it, we get to mistake number four, which is not carrying it everywhere you go. And I mean, not literally, but literally everywhere you go. When starting out, I made the mistake of not carrying it with me wherever I went. And when I went to a friend or went grocery shopping, I was thinking that, yeah, I'm not planning on writing there in my notebook, so I might as well leave it at home to not overburden myself. And that's a big mistake, because when using it properly you can't foresee on when you get the need to jot something down in the notebook, so yeah, always have it with you. And mistake number five, which I also recognized even myself doing, was that I wasn't reserving sufficient amount of time to write stuff down there. Uh, surely, yeah, to-do lists are way faster to write down than journals, but if you're more on the journaling mindset, you have to reserve daily probably anything between 15 to 30 minutes to write your thoughts down. And 
And the final bonus mistake is uh, using tools you don't actually enjoy using. And that's solely the reason I've now switched over to entirely using the Lockbit lineup of products. Surely you can use any notebook which suits your size and has a formatting you like, meaning rules or grids or whatever. But if you don't enjoy carrying it with you or enjoy handling it, you won't be following through on actually using it. And with the right tool for the job, for bigger and more serious projects, I'm then using the Lockview Field Journal. Yeah, it's decently sized and you can fit full-sized notebooks in here. I have a review of this on my channel up here in the corner. Because yeah, ultimately if a to-do list or journaling is something you want to actually do, then you might as well invest in yourself a bit. And that is the five note-taking mistakes that I've done personally, or technically six. Uh, perhaps you recognized yourself in one of them and hopefully they're helping you to get a better hold of yourself in your daily life. If you enjoyed this video, watch this far, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down there. So like this video and also subscribe so you don't miss out on the future content I post here. And thanks for riding fences with me today and I'll catch you next time. See ya!